Welcome to The Miracle You, guiding you on the journey towards finding passion and purpose and how to discover, create, and live a life by your design. Whether your success has been plentiful or your missed opportunities have been overwhelming, we can help you become a more empowered, masterful person and show you how to share your gift with the world. It's time to inspire change from within with the host of The Miracle You, Vince Kramer. Hello, everyone. We are your hosts, Mary and Vince Kramer. Welcome to Waking Up, where we share discussions, insights, and information about science, spirituality, and living a life of your design. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Waking Up with Vince and Mary. I am thrilled to share this episode with you. It has been a few episodes since we explored a concept from our book, Awakening Through Moments of Choice. We have been moving through the book in order, which brings us to a chapter that I'm sure a lot of you will find quite interesting. It is chapter seven of the book, We Meet Again. We have gotten great feedback from so many people on the book and especially on this chapter. This chapter of the book really has three parts to it. Vince, would you describe them to everyone? Of course. I I think, first of all, before I mention the three parts, this chapter is really about how people show up in our lives to be there for us on, on our journey. And sometimes we recognize it and sometimes we don't. There's one thing that I would love for everybody to think about is that These people that are coming into our lives, many of them are soul agreements, and they're here to help us discover, learn, grow, expand. And some of them are here for a very short amount of time. Some of them are here, what do they say, Mary, for a season, and others are here for a lifetime. And in the timing of people coming in and out of our lives, we may be ready or we may not. So we'll talk a little bit about that later. But the three parts of this chapter that I think are pretty significant stories. First of all, when Martha and I decided that we were going to get a divorce, when I agreed that, okay, if she if she no longer wanted to be married, then we could move on. It was important for me to get out in together as a couple and share with our friends what was happening and why it was happening and and what they could expect. So that's the the one story in there. The second story in there is when you and I first met Mary and the craziness that happened with that energy that I felt and not being able to understand it. Well, that meeting in Cabo really confused me and and mixed me up and I didn't know what to think or what to feel through it. And then the reintroduction that we had, Larry, the same person that introduced us down in Cabo, reintroducing us and trying to figure out why we were coming back together then was the third story that shared in this chapter. All three great stories in themselves. And there's so much more detail and energy and excitement in the book itself, so much more emotion. But what we want to talk to you that are listening today is the last two stories really address the fact that we're consciously getting messages and promptings. I know for my divorce, I was first experiencing promptings, messages through my body really feeling stress and thinking that I was going to have a heart attack and die. So I had a little bit of that, let's say, scary nudges that a lot of us ignore when it's our body. We're like, yeah, it's medical and we can justify it and brush it off. But what was interesting is, and this story is in the book, when I went to finally get a cardiological checkup, the very first thing that the doctor said was stress will kill you. What are you doing? What's going on in your relationship? You need to get to therapy now. So I went from a more subtle and justifiable 
prompting to pay attention that something wasn't right in my life to a very specific message that came through the cardiologist that rang a bell for me that I needed to get pretty serious about what was happening for me. So when that happened, because one of the stories that uh, I, I know we're going to talk about right now is for us to make a decision to go out and talk to our friends. How did you and Russ handle that? That's a great question. You know, to be really honest with you, uh, we worked all of the time and there weren't a whole lot of people for us to go out and share with. Uh, I did, however, feel compelled beyond our closest, closest friends who kind of went through the mud with us a little different than you and Martha. They were, they were in the, in the knowing long before we made the final decision. But interestingly, to answer your question, there was one friend that I felt I had to tell, and that's the guy that reintroduced us. And I went by myself to tell him. Why was it important for you to share the divorce with your friends? And why was it important to put it in the book? Well, just like you said, you know, one of the people that I talked to was Larry also. Uh, Larry and Gail were close friends of Martha and mine. And uh, so they were one of the last two couples, as I mentioned in the story of the book. Uh, to be completely honest with you, it was probably for two reasons I wanted to share it with our friends. One, I, I didn't want anybody to get caught in the middle. Most of our friend couples were truly that, couple friends. And I, I knew that it was going to affect them that we were getting a divorce. And, and I, I was sure that somehow or another, one of us would probably be left out of the friendships. So I, I wanted everybody to, to know that it was happening and to realize that uh, we both came to the decision, but I also wanted them to know why we came to the decision. And, and then really, once again, uh, I want to be transparent. I probably also didn't want to take a chance of being made the bad guy. The situation that we had, yes, I definitely created part of that situation, but um, I didn't want it to look like I was the bad guy. So unfortunately, you know, I was looking out for myself a little bit as we went through that process. And as for why it was important to share it in the book, it was really an illustration how we are constantly being moved towards our path and the creations and co-creations that happen in our lives are something to be a pay attention to. I truly think it was a co-creation that Martha was ready at that point to leave the marriage because she wanted to be happy, but it then it forced me to look at my life completely different, try to figure out what was missing, and to understand life a little bit differently. And the fact that we went to Larry and Gail and said, look, we're getting a divorce. This is what happened. This is why. It was an impetus for Larry to call me the next day and say, hey, how are you doing? And then say, oh, you really should talk to Mary. Mary might be able to help you understand. So that, that really opened things up for Mary and I to have another chance. And we'll talk about the two chances here in a second. I can see that. And I can see the synchronicity in it. From my side, I was in Martha's shoes. So I was the one asking for the divorce in my marriage. But just like you and feeling the need to share with certain people, isn't it interesting that I had to share with the same person as well? definitely synchronistic and definitely played a role in giving us the opportunity by having us put together on the same path 
And, you know, we didn't decide right away. I think we were, it's in the book, but I think we were drinking buddies for a year before we dated and delved into if we were on the right path together. But definitely there's synchronicities there. One of the parts of the book that has gotten much attention is our first meeting in Cabo. There are so many people who have shared that they have had energetic experiences just like it. So you were vacationing with our mutual friends and our first meeting kind of freaked you out. What was it like for you? I think one of the most exciting things about uh, the our first meeting was that there was no expectations. Uh, both of us were, or at least Mar Martha and I were happily married at the time. And we were just trying to relax. And then I show up at the pool right after we landed. And there was a, an opportunity to meet some new people. So it was, it was just a, a truly relaxing vacation for me. And then all of a sudden, you know, there you were. And it was so hard. It's, all, it's still so hard to explain because there wasn't a physical attraction. There wasn't an emotional attraction. There was just something so powerful, energetic that I didn't know what to think about it. To be honest with you, it was strange. It was an undeniable feeling, but it was also so scary. And it was scary for, for two reasons. One, I didn't know what it meant. I've never had anything like that before. And it was so deep that I felt I was looking like or acting like some kind of idiot out in the middle of the pool when really all the energy thing was was happening inside of me. And I made a decision in that very moment that I, I just, I got to stay away from this person because it's going to be obvious there's the connection and and I didn't want to leave my marriage at the time or anything else. And second, I didn't know if Mary had that same type of connection. So I did. I stayed away. I stayed away for 10 years. You did. And I've uh, been disappointed in you for that because I had young kids that I think would have been really would have really benefited by uh, having you in their life even younger then you did get to help them. But very interesting what you were sharing. And yes, a lot of people have talked about that particular story because they've had, they've experienced it. And in some cases, some people ex both experienced it. In my case, I didn't because to be honest, I stopped looking. So I had had a prompting to start looking for you years before you showed up three, I believe, three years before you finally showed up in Cabo. And by then I was just busy. I was working. I had turned my attention back to life. And so, you know, I wasn't being receptive energetically and I missed the big right in front of my face calling, prompting message. It, you were right there. What a bummer for me, but that's the way it goes. Life goes on. And so, yes, fortunately, we meet again. As the chapter is titled that, we meet again. I think it's so interesting that the person that introduced us 10 years earlier brought us back together. I feel there is no way anyone can deny the significance in that. And I will forever, forever be thankful. I'm not too sure I understood what it meant at the time, but I don't know. What was it like for you? Well, it's the second introduction was really at a time that I was probably at my lowest. You know, like you said in, in an earlier podcast, you know, there's times that things happen in our lives and we just kind of go into a tailspin or or a spiral down. And and that's where I was at that time. As I explained to Larry and Gail why we were getting a divorce, and then when Larry called me the next day and said, are you all right? And it was like, no, I'm not all right. I don't know what happened. I don't understand it all. And that's when Larry said, you know, Vince, I, I think 
that Mary can help you understand. She's going through something similar at the same time. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't think about it at the time, but as I look back now, talk about synchronicities, like we were talking about earlier, both of us getting divorced at the exact same time. Matter of fact, I think the divorces were final within days of each other, and neither one of us knew that that we were getting divorced. So I, I think that synchronicity is huge. And then because of our second meeting coming together 10 years later, I mean, who can even imagine that? I, I really believe that we could be good friends. And I felt comfortable and I felt calm around you. And, and I was missing that for a long time during that period where Martha said she wanted a divorce. And then, you know, I drug my feet for a while. And, and then all of a sudden we're on the way. But then there's the other side of that, Mary. I still, that time that you showed up to the card game, I still had that energetic connection that I still couldn't explain, but I still wasn't quite there to pursue why we had the connection because I was still wrapped up in trying to make the marriage work. And I wish I could tell you that 10 years later, I was more receptive and more energetic because I wasn't, I was still wrapped up in working too hard. And, but, and then I added to my plate, I'm getting a divorce. I've got to get out of here or I'm going to die. And like I said, a few minutes ago, you were right there in front of me, but I wasn't being receptive. I wasn't listening. I wasn't feeling the energy, which now today I am such a different person. As far as feeling energy, it would be a completely different experience. Yeah. And like you shared, when we started hanging out, we started hanging out as it, it must have been great for you because you felt like it was only a year, but it was 18 months from the time that we first started hanging out before we actually had a divorce. And it was good for us because we had an opportunity to to truly find out why we were together and to, to realize that there was good things happening for us. And because we found each other, I mean, you had an opportunity to find out who I was as a person as we spent that time together. And, and I had the, the same opportunity and we got to see, you know, what we had in common and where we needed to find some other things in common in both of us growing and expanding. I did too. It was great. And I love this time to, that we get to reflect on these incredible stories together. And I love when we get emails from people that read the book and have similar situations and they write to us and they tell us all about it. And it's so heartwarming. It's one of my favorite parts. Another favorite thing that I love is how uh, when we put the book together, we put in the moment of reflection at the end of each chapter. What does the chapter share with the reader that should be their biggest takeaway? I love the moment of reflection too, because it gives everybody an opportunity to see what lessons in each chapter and what they can learn from, from each story. And it's a, uh, it's a gift sometimes to be able to learn and grow from somebody else's story instead of experiencing it yourself. This chapter, I think, was very powerful. And I think there were so many things that you could take away from it. Some of the big ones for me is that we're constantly getting those people coming in our lives. And there's some reason that they come in their lives. There are no mistakes or coincidences. So as they come into our lives, they're definitely helping us on our journey. So I think there's there's a big message in that. I think also that we don't pay attention to the messages and promptings. But the exciting thing was, and this story, but this chapter truly shows us in a huge way that if we don't pay attention to those messages or promptings, they're probably going to show up for us again. Don't beat yourself up if you let something go by the wayside and look back later and say, oh, I should have, because there's another opportunity coming your way to help you get back on 
on path with the people that are coming in your lives or other messages or promptings. And then the other thing that I think I want everybody to hear is that there's no mistake in a relationship that you're having. There is a journey together in that. There is a reason that you've come together and there's a, a difference that you're meant to make because you came together. And I think it took us a while to learn that, but we each had our own way, but then we learned that we had a way together. And I think that's illustrated in the chapter also. It definitely is. So before we go, I just want to share what you were saying about how all relationships have a meaning. And earlier you talked about sometimes they're only for a season. And while my first marriage was a long season, 25 years, there were many, many gifts that came out of that relationship that have benefited me in our relationship. So I just wanted to put that more positive spin on divorce talk here today. And I want to share too that uh, my life with Martha was very happy for the entire marriage for me. And it was uh, an opportunity for me to learn so much about myself and and learn about someone else and, and walk a journey with them. So I agree with you 100%. The, the, the friends, the people that come into our lives to truly make a difference in our lives and we hopefully can make a difference in their life is so important. What a wonderful time we've had today. We talked about the, the three main stories in chapter seven, and hopefully it'll trigger something in you where there's a meeting that you might have had with someone that you had this connection and didn't quite understand it. And maybe you can look back on it and and see how it might have changed the trajectory of your life so and the opportunity for mary and i to first of all meet uh, in a time of our lives where that energy connection started changing both of us and changing the trajectory of of our lives and then coming back together to truly find that uh, we did have a purpose together and bringing that purpose together ended up in the book, Awakening Through Moments of Choice. It has been truly fun. And once again, though, it is already the end of our time together. We know today's topic is important for all of us as we choose to live the life we are meant to live. If you want to learn more about Imagine Miracles and other topics about living your unique purpose, go to imaginemiracles.com. And as always, you can get our best-selling book, Awakening Through Moments of Choice at Amazon.com. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time, have a miracle day. You've completed this episode of The Miracle You, but we have plenty more to help you discover your own personal passion and purpose. Head over to TheMiracleYou.com for free resources to assist you on your journey, as well as register for our free webinar, Discover Your Miracle Life, Three Mind Awakening Steps Toward Your Unique Purpose, or apply for a one-on-one -on -one Your Life, Your Way breakthrough session and discover your next best step on your journey. All available exclusively on our website. That's TheMiracleU.com. We look forward to sharing more experiences of passion, purpose, and life by design next time, right here on The Miracle You.